channel. My name is Adam. This is Van City Audi. We're back at Racing Green and I got my B8 S4 back on the dyno. I've already shown you guys some numbers dynoing the car here. I now have the integrated engineering stage one 93 octane file. I have a Merc Racing S6 heat exchanger installed as well. And today we're going to toss on integrated engineering's air intake system. We're going to see if it actually makes any power. The claims that Integrated makes are at a stage two dual pulley setup. So I'm only stage one, but I still want to see if it makes any power at this level. We know it's going to make some really cool noises, some whiny noises from that supercharger. So we're going to toss that on. We're going to see a before and after comparison. In some of my videos that I've previously shown you guys, I have shown you guys a DinoJet calibrated number on this Mustang Dino. I put it out there and a lot of you don't want to see that number on this car. So we are going to stick with Mustang Dino numbers. No calibration, the car puts it down, spits it out, and that's what we're showing you guys. First thing I'm going to show you guys are all of the runs that I've previously done to let you know the Mustang numbers that I've already done. Stock, stage 191, stage 193 from Integrated Engineering. Then we're going to do a baseline run today to get you another reading how the car performs today. It'll probably be the same or very, very close to the same. I think it might be a little chillier than it was the first time I was here, but that's why I do these. You want to see the actual results on the same day you make a modification to the car to see if they actually make a difference. Here are all the results and all the dyno graphs from my previous runs here at Racing Green. Run number three is actually the baseline run that we did. 286 wheel, 276 foot-pounds of torque. Then we stepped it up to stage one, 91 octane from Integrated Engineering. We see 353 wheel, 318 foot-pounds of torque. And then finally, what I expect to see roughly today, 360 wheel horsepower, 320 foot-pounds of torque at the wheels on this Mustang Dyno. Now for today's baseline run. point that I forgot to mention already in the video is the previous days we were here we did all of our pulls in third gear. The reason for that was we saw the intake air temps fluctuating like crazy. They were skyrocketing with that OEM heat exchanger and our goal is to show consistency. So when we were doing that fuel comparison video we did it all in third gear to make it consistent for all the fuels. Now that we're making more power, now that we are trying to slowly but surely gain and gain and gain, we are doing all of the pulls in fourth gear. So what I'm about to show you is today's baseline in fourth gear, a bit cooler outside, the ambience cooler, we have this Merc Racing S6 heat exchanger compared to the day before, well not necessarily the day before, the last time you saw me dyno the car, was in third gear a bit warmer without the heat exchanger. The graphs look nearly identical. The power band looks nearly identical, just a bit higher today. Our previous run was 360 wheel, 320 foot-pounds of torque. Today we managed 370 wheel and 332 foot-pounds of torque. Stage one, 93 octane from Integrated Engineering, and this is our baseline run previous to installing the intake. Time for the air intake system install. The final time you guys are going to see the stock system on this car. We're gonna rip this thing out and toss in the new system from Integrated Engineering. We now have a big gaping hole from where the stock box used to be. Time to toss in the brand new integrated engineering intake to replace the stock system. I've laid out all the parts that come with the integrated engineering air intake system, just so you guys can see it broken down before we actually get it installed into the car. 
I've actually also optioned for the carbon fiber lid. As much as I do really enjoy that supercharger wine, I don't necessarily need it to be as loud as some of you other guys, which are obsessed with making your car as loud as possible. Here's the air intake system installed. We haven't put the carbon fiber lid on. I just wanted to show you guys what it looks like previous to us covering it up. Seeing as from what I've seen online, the majority of you really love as much supercharger wine as you can get. And this is what it looks like for you guys. Here it is with the install fully completed with this beautiful carbon fiber cover on top. Doesn't add horsepower or anything like that, but I think makes it look a hell of a lot nicer and I'm hoping it dulls down a bit of the wine. Don't want to stand out too bad in my daily driver. see what the fuss is all about. Now that we have the integrated engineering air intake system installed in my B8S4, it is time to find out if it makes more power. They make claims of a certain amount of power, I don't even know how much it is, but that's based off of a dual pulley setup, a stage two. So at my stage one, 93 octane setup, I'm really wondering if it's gonna make a difference. It sounds pretty crazy, I'll give it that. But now to put it to the test. point I wanted to make before I show you guys the results is the fact that we did four pulls. This wasn't just a one and done. We did three pulls previously for our baseline. We took the best run, not the highest, but the cleanest run. And we did again the same thing with the air intake system installed, but this time we did four runs because the graph looks a little weird. A very, very weird looking graph. <laughs> with this little hump of power in the top part of the pole, and then we had a gain in power throughout the entire mid-range. But how much was it? Here we go, guys. 386 wheel up from 370 and 334 up from 332 for the foot-pounds of torque. The only downside is it was pretty much on par all the way through the lower part of the pull. Not until you hit about 45 around 100 RPM do we actually see there being a bit of gain through the mid-range. Then up top, I don't know what to tell you guys, that is very weird. <laughs> Once you get to about 6600 RPM, 6500, you get this weird spike at the top. I'm definitely gonna be contacting Integrated Engineering to see if it's something up with the tune or the car, or if that's just the way it runs at this power level. Two weeks have now passed since I was here at Racing Greed doing those dyno pulls with my integrated engineering air intake system installed. I saw that weird pimple of power on the end. I went back to integrated engineering, had them look at my logs and said, what the dilly guys? This is a little weird. Why am I getting that weird dip in power? They reviewed the logs and said, Adam, it's a simple fix. It's because you are hitting target boost. Your bypass valve is opening and we don't want that to happen. It turns out here in beautiful Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, we have unbelievable racing conditions. It is super cold here. The air is very dense. The density altitude is super low. So I'm actually making a ton of boost. But that was a problem on the previous tune because I'd hit target boost and that bypass valve would open. So what we've done over the past couple weeks, we've done a bunch of data logging. They have then sent me updated tunes and we're back out here two revisions later. I'm hoping now that that bypass valve stays closed and we're able to make a smoother power band. The only problem, the only difference is 
Within the last two weeks, I actually installed integrated engineering down pipes as well. Wah, wah. It's not a perfect, perfect apples to apples comparison. We might make a tiny bit of power from that mod. I was under the impression that it was just a sound modification, and that's why we tossed them on to make this thing sound a bit better. That video is still to come, so pay attention for that one. But we're not sure how much that's going to affect it. I think right now it's two degrees Celsius, so it is a cold day. We might make a bit more power, but I just want to see if I can solve that power band. See if I can make it look a little more linear and not have that hump anymore and then that pimple of power on the end. Something I should have mentioned earlier in this video, but I didn't, is I need to give credit to this Merc Racing heat exchanger. It has worked phenomenally well so far. We just did four back to back to back pulls, back to back to back to back pulls. <laughs> and the intake air temp, as much as it is cold out here, did not surpass 50 degrees Celsius. Even with like, what? How long? Maybe like a minute cool down, two minute cool down in between? It wasn't long and we, yeah, it was like back to back pretty much. We have been ripping on this thing and the Merc Racing Heat Exchanger has done a great job. Previous to this, when it was a bit warmer, it was seeing around 57 degrees uh, intake air temp and that was also beating on it and romping on it. And previous on our OEM unit, I was seeing as high as 67, 68 degrees. So it has consistently kept this car much cooler and on back to back to back runs has definitely kept those intake air temps down. Looky, looky guys, we've managed to get rid of that weird hump in power at the end. Now that the bypass valve is staying closed, we see a consistent, nice and strong pull all the way from start to finish. We now managed 392 wheel horsepower, 339 foot-pounds of torque, up from 386 and 334, so we made slight gains on both parts there. Definitely power was made. Like I said, it is a little cooler, but we can definitely see that the tune has now been sorted out. I am no longer uh, hitting target boost and that bypass valve is staying closed. Here's the before the air intake system versus after the intake system. You can see that there's a slight gain all the way up to about 4,700 RPM where it really starts to make a difference. Especially up top is where you see the biggest gains with this air intake system. Yes, I do realize guys, it's not apples to apples because of the fact I have downpipes on there as well as a different day. It's a bit cooler, but I wanted to make sure that we did this so the tune was working as it was developed to work. I wanted to make sure that I gave it a fair chance. We are now seeing 392 versus 370 prior. So we're up another 22 wheel horsepower from that intake from the downpipes and sorting the tune out. And we used to make 332 foot pounds of torque and we're up to 339. There you have it, the second time visiting Racing Greed in two weeks with my B8S4. Very, very pumped about making 392 wheel horsepower and 339 foot-pounds of torque in this B8S4. Very impressive. Big, big thanks to Integrated Engineering for working with me and making sure that their tune was running as it was meant to. I can only imagine that this is gonna benefit all the other Stage 1 93 Octane users around the world who may be making really good boost in cold environments because now that they've bumped that target boost value, your bypass valve should be staying closed and previously it might have been opening up and you might not have been making as much power as you were able to. Very, very cool, very thankful. I am pumped to now have this integrated engineering air intake system on. The car definitely sounds better under throttle when you're giving it power. What? That wine. Driving around, daily driving. I do like to cruise. I don't like the wine. I am a bit of a prissy bitch that way. But <laughs> when I'm on it and I'm having fun with it, it sounds like a million bucks and it clearly makes more power. Thank you so much for watching everybody. Until next time, take care.